That is Sheena Koike for a lot of sportstalk.com as we are in the shadows of Central Park in New York City. And right now we are right behind the New York Athletic Club in New York City, where the 2012-2013 Big East Men's Basketball Media Day was just completed. The Wildcats came in winning five of the last six against these two schools, but Villanova losing this ball game, Temple winning by 11, now going to six and two on the season and extending their home court win streak here at the Leo Chorus Center to 24 games. That is a far cry from the last four seasons at UCLA under Rick Neuheisel. 21 combined wins in the Rick Neuheisel era. In Jim Mora's first season at UCLA, nine wins, a chance for 10 wins for the first time since 2005. And through the bad and the good, running back Jonathan Franklin has been one of the best running backs in the country. And it's to be said, has to be said, he's one of the best running backs in Pac-12 history. And that's saying something. And one of the players in the semifinals, of course, Serena Williams playing some amazing tennis here, has not dropped the set here at Flushing Meadows. She will take on the number one ranked player in the world, the Dane Caroline Wojniacki. Should be an amazing matchup. Wojniacki, of course, looking for her first Grand Slam. Kloof to moves to the left now. High screen Nicholson. A pass top of the key to Andrew Ford. Three. It's up. It is off the front of the rim, then drops in. As Andrew Nicholson got the rub of the green on that shot, Nicholson. Third and one at Oregon's 36. Three tight ends. It is the play action again. Luck is back over the middle. He's got a man wide open. Ten. Looks like Fleener. And it is a touchdown for Stanford. Chaz Williams scything through the defense, but his layup no good inside. Rebound to Nicholson. Fires an outlet pass to Conger. Ahead of the field. And a two-hand flush. Bonnie's back in front. Andrew Nicholson can do anything and everything on the court. How about a 70-foot bullet of an outlet pass to a wide-open Demetrius Conger, who has four. When you're at Providence, you coach Billy Donovan, now a head coach at Florida. When you were at Kentucky, you have guys like John Pelfrey, Sean Woods, who are now head coaches. In your Louisville career, Travis Ford. Okay, Travis Ford as well. My yeah. apologies. My apologies. I was at now at Oklahoma State um, and others as well. Uh, from your time at Louisville, any player or players that you see uh, as a future head coach, past or present, any players that you coached at Louisville, that is going to be a new part of the uh, Patino tree, a new leaf to grow from the Patino tree as a head coach? It's interesting. Um, I would say that Peyton Siva could be a terrific head coach someday. Mike Mara, who was just injured, wants to go into coaching. At what level, I'm not sure. Reese Gaines, a uh, lottery pick, is now at Bellarmine. He, he has a strong desire to get into coaching. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, I really haven't come across that type of player at Louisville. Like, I knew Travis, I knew, I knew John Pelfrey. Uh, they, they were going to be outstanding teachers of the game. Billy Donovan, certainly. Uh, Sean Woods is not a head coach of Moorhead State. Um, so I uh, had a lot of guys go into it, and I encourage that. But the guys at Louisville really want to play professional basketball. They really do. And they consider coaching well beneath that level. Joined in the Redskins locker room by Ryan Kerrigan. And first of all, Ryan, a big win for you guys. 38-26 against Minnesota. Talk about the very beginning of the game when Minnesota dominated possession early. And you guys just uh, held the fort and only held them to nine points when they got into your 10-yard line three times in a row. That's the big thing. I mean, you're going to give up yards in this league, especially to an offense like that, that can move the ball both through the air and on the ground. So, um, But I was proud of us. In that we didn't allow any touchdowns because there's a big difference between uh, nine points and you know 14, 17 points. So it's a good job by us not not breaking down that far and uh, you know. Is good. I mean, ultimately, for the most part of the game, we did that. The Fordham Rams defeating a ranked team for the first time since 1978, a 60 to 54 win over the number 22 ranked Harvard Crimson. And joining me right now, the head coach of the Fordham Rams, Tom Pacora. First of all, congratulations on your win. And if the win over an ACC team last week was good, this must be twice as nice beating a ranked team. Well, being able to do them back to back and being able to do it at home, I think, is what makes it special in front of our fans and alumni and all the people here at Fordham and. and this gym is magic. It's a special place and a wonderful place to watch basketball. So I'm excited about doing it here for our fans. Now talk about the last uh, couple of seasons, uh, Final Fours, National Championship games. Do you remember the successes more during the year or do you kind of just think about all that one last game? It, what do you think about more? It was a process. I think you think about the whole season and you, you, 
you have to reflect on the whole season. I mean, obviously that's how our season ended, and that's the most um, recent memory we have of, of the season as far as a, that's, that's the last time we, we played. Um, but you definitely have to think um, – on a bigger scale, what what can you benefit from in that in that game, and what do we do well during the season, and, and things that we can work on also? Now, speaking of retirement and your post uh, football career, even during your football career, you had uh, the Brooks Bunch. You still have it. Uh, such a big effort in you instilling some good values into the youngsters. Where did that come from? And talk about what you uh, want to instill in the youngsters that you help out and take uh, into your foundations. Well, I thank God uh, for the platform that He given me a football. Without this game game of football who knows if those things would have been possible uh, at that level and I think it's simple uh, I believe a kid uh, when you're given the opportunity to overcome an obstacle when you overcome that obstacle you order to yourself to throw the rope back and give someone else that rope to grab hold to and pull themselves over their obstacle and you keep throwing the rope back that's what I like to say continue to throw the rope back because if you don't that investment that you made in yourself to overcome that obstacle it goes to waste. There's no return on it because you're not giving anyone else that opportunity. From sewing to culinary activities, it's all in a day's work for these East Texas high schoolers at their Ready. Hustle up, hustle up, go hustle in the up. game. Let's go. Football camp? The fourth in one football camp in Mount Pleasant is much more than X's and O's. In its second year, the week-long camp focuses on local at-risk youth as it's free for all students accepted. Just as important, it balances sports training with life skills classes and standardized test preparation, the only football camp in North America to do so. I like the focus in the front row. I have a greater passion for teaching the whole person. Um, I believe it was Aristotle that said that you, gotta, you don't just teach the physical body, but you teach the mind, body, and spirit. And so I think that's kind of the beautiful thing about this camp is that it does all three. Just shy of two hours of each jam-packed day at 4th and 1 is spent right here on the gridiron. So 4th and 1 provides these children, in a positive way, a reality check. We have them sit down, take a, almost a full-length SAT. A little bit of resistance, to say the least, but it's amazing to see the transition. We're at the end of the week now, end of the week last year. The difference, last year we had about a 60-point average gain, and this year I'm trying not to get too excited, but I think it could be, could be even better. Volunteers teach all of the workshops and include classes in yoga, dressing to impress, and even learning manners. We have instructors coming who are graduates of Harvard, Stanford, UVA, Rice, University of Texas, just really highly educated individuals who have dedicated their time and efforts to the, stu to the student athletes. Moving the chains on the field and in the classroom is the mission statement of 4th and 1, and it's proven to be a touchdown for everyone involved. For ESPN The Magazine, I'm Adesina Koike.